so that's it. it's exactly what it sounds like. The set of points that are drawn are the set of points with the same value of electric potential or voltage. Let me illustrate that with this six volt equipotential line. So at, well, around where I drew it, it was six volt, right? Any other point that's on the line is a six volt. Now here's the uh, interesting thing about potential or, or uh, voltage. Is it a vector or scalar quantity? Look at the mathematical definition here. Does it tell you that it's a, oops. The, yeah, it's a scalar because it's a result of what you get by that product. So, um, so with the electric field magnitude, you have to say things like, you know, it, these are the lines along which same magnitude. With the potential, I don't have to bother with the magnet, word magnitude. I can say these are the points with equal potential because they don't have direction. Magnitude is all there is. Yeah. So that's how they are drawn. I mean, that's, uh, that's really the definition of equipotential line or equipotential surface. You take set of all the points at the same voltage, and that's your equipotential. equipotential. That's why I can say for this uh, line, for this circle here, I can definitively say, well, this is my six volt line or six volt circle, because all the points on the circle are at six volts. Um, so the second question, it's a little bit um, hard to guess at it, but so let's say I don't have any of the uh, electric field lines that I have drawn. So I don't have any of these electric field lines that I have drawn, that they are gone. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have erased them quite yet. But eh, you know, eh. and let's say I'm even getting rid of my electric field pictures. So all I'm looking at are drawings of equipotentials. And somebody asks you, where is the electric field strongest and why? How would you answer that? Um, well, I'll say the strongest is where it's the densest. Where, say it's the strongest where it's the densest. Where it's the densest, why? So that is the correct answer. So where it's the densest, you know, where it's the denser, here, it is, electric field is stronger. But why? You know, it's the correct intuition, but. Uh, so you're just remembering that this, with the discharge distribution, that's what electric field will look like. Uh, later on, what I want you to look at is something that looks like this. Did I have the picture brought up? Maybe, no, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, so this is the picture I want, uh, not that one. This is what I want you to look at eventually. Uh, so you don't know what charge distribution is generating this, and I want you to answer, well, where is electric field the strongest? So I want you to answer something based on the features of equipotential alone and nothing else. If it's denser, it's greater potential? Now, let me have you think about it. So you are trying to associate greater electric potential with a greater electric field. Sometimes that's the case, not always. So whenever you feel like you are struggling with a concept, the thing you do in physics, this is how we do things in physics, is you fall back on definitions. That's why we spend so much time um, introducing these definitions. So the thing you should fall back on, whenever you, are, you feel like you're struggling with something, whenever you're struggling with the electric field, you should fall back to the definition. Whenever you feel like you're struggling with the relationship between electric field and um, potential, you should fall back on the definition. So based on this definition, how can you argue that where the equipotential lines are spaced closer together, that somehow the electric field should be stronger? It helps if you see the inverse relationship of this definition. So this is the inverse relationship of this definition. Um, what color should I, I'll continue to use red. 
So you can actually turn this relationship around. It's actually easier to do it with this one, so I will do that. And then I'll do that for this one also. So, you know, it's a, so let's say somebody asked you to solve for electric field here. It's a simple matter to just algebraically solve for E here, right? So let me do that. When I solve for electric field there, um, I'll just say I'm solving for electric field magnitude. <laughs> not, um, so my electric field along the direction x is, um, move this over there, multiply by minus, so it's a minus change in voltage as you go from A to B over change in distance as you go from A to B. Does this sound reasonable? Or you know, you go back the other way. Assuming this is the electric field component along X, you take that product with this, you should get this back, right? So when you look at this, this relationship tells you why where the spacing is closer, the electric field is stronger. The way I drew these equipotential lines, what can you say about the difference in the electric, pot what can you say about the difference in the voltage from one line to the next? What was the difference in voltage, the way it was drawn? Same voltage distance, right? Here, in this case, it was two volts. And you know, one, between one and the next one, it's the same voltage difference, two volts. And that's, a, by the way, one of the conventions we follow when we draw equipotential lines. We make sure that the spacing of voltage we use is the same spacing for um, different points. So the way this is drawn, the delta V is always a constant quantity. So what do you expect to see with the delta X as electric field gets stronger? you expect a smaller spacing. So that's what you see here. So it's stronger here because the spacing of delta x is getting smaller. So here it's not explicitly about density. With the field lines, it was density. Here with, it's with actually spacing between the two equipotentials. Yeah? Okay, uh, 